because I'm so old, I make a lot of retrospective everywhere. Uh, it's a little when you arrive at home and you have nothing to eat and you open your fridge and you find two potatoes, three eggs and some cheese and you decide to create something to eat. When I make a show with my fridge and I put some old works and some new works and I try to, to make it come back. At the end, the show is like a new work and um, people are going to come and to see this show but in three months this show is going to disappear and nobody can see it again. For me, it's a very pleasant time because we work with other people, because we know that we have a date and we must to finish for this date, and everybody is working in the same direction, and that's always very pleasant. I think that the beginning of the life of an artist, there is always some kind of a trauma. And for me, the trauma was that when I was very young, two years or three years old, all the friends of my parents were survivors from the Shoah, and they arrived and they spoke and spoke in front of me, and that was my trauma. And I think all my life was changed because I had this trauma when I was so young. And also, I hear all the story of my father who was hide under the floor, during nearly one year, and all that, you know, it was very difficult for me to support it, and it was my trauma. I work a lot about the idea of chance and destiny. If you are religious, you believe it was right somewhere, and if a child suffers, there is a reason, it's for something. If you are not religious like me, you believe that only it's a disorder, it's stupid, it's only chance. God doesn't care about us. I don't believe in God, but if there is a God, He doesn't care about us. When I make a show like this one, it's a little like when you are in Spain and you have a church and the door are open and you go in and you can see a man making oh, and there is some music and some smell of candles and some painting around and it's dark and you don't know exactly what, what that means because you are not a believer but you sit and you stay there during 10 minutes and perhaps during these 10 minutes you try to think about yourself or about life and after 10 minutes you go out and you go out to the cars, to the sun, to say, why well, I'm going to have lunch. But during these 10 minutes, you feel something different. You added uh, one more church to the city with the most churches anywhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I told you I'm not a believer, but I think we need places like that. We need place to have some rest, some place to think. It's a temple, but a temple with no answers. Just one priest, you? No, just only each one must find his own answer. There's nobody who gives the answer. Not me or not the others. Only each one must find what he have to find. So we have a priest without answers? That's really the definition for me to be a Jewish. Elaborate on that. <laughs> um, yeah, I think so. I, I, you know, I was born in the Catholic religion, and I know not so many things about the Jewish religion. But it seems to me that when you are Jewish, to be Jewish is to look for God, but not to find God. There's two religion who don't give an answer: Jewish religion and the Buddhist philosophy. But all the religions who believe to have an answer are terrible and dangerous. It's very bad to have the answers. For me, it is very important that people can recognize themselves. And if the photo is too clear, they can't recognize themselves or they can't recognize uh, 
the brother or the father or the mothers because the photo is too clear. If the photo is unfocused, they can recognize people that they knew. And for this reason, I think a photo unfocused is more universal than a photo with totally focus. You have the eyes of your great great father and the nose of a great great uncle and the mouth of an old great mother. All these people disappeared, but they are in your face and I'm totally sure they are also in your spirit. I always try to show the unicity of each person. What was awful for the Shoah was to kill everybody. What was worse for me was not to speak about the identity of everybody. I mean, to speak to everybody like an object, but not like humans. And in my work, there's really a lot of humans and a lot of people, but each one is different. Here in this room, there's all these people coming from a French newspaper called Detective. And the idea is that half of these people are criminals and half are victims. But when you look at the photos, it's nearly impossible to know who is he. For me, and I'm going to be a little pretentious, my job is a little like uh, to be a Zen master or to be an acidic rabbin. is to say little stories and these stories are a question, but there are no answers. This piece, people guilty or not guilty, is a question that the criminal and the victim have the same face. And, uh, and perhaps they're the same person sometimes. The big curtains with the, the eyes on it, you walk through it, and these are pieces that you sort of can touch. Okay. Yeah. You can touch. You must go inside. It's like a labyrinth. These faces are coming from Greece. I made the piece in Athens three or four years ago, and they are Greek eyes. What is very important in my work and in this show is that you are not in front of something, you are inside something. And also, it's not the place to say, I love this painting and I don't like this painting, or this one is better. All the show is only one big work. I made this figure, and they ask questions about how you die. For me, they are like a dark angel, and they're going to tell you, did you suffer a lot? Did you leave somebody? You know, they ask questions about the time when you die. What happened when you die? Tell me. Were you afraid? Tell me, was it quick? Tell me, did you fly away? Tell me, who did you leave behind? You know, I'm somebody who, who speaks about the death. Humanity began when they begin to make tombs for humans. And my job is to make terms for humans. Your obituary should have a photo out of focus? <laughs> I don't know. I don't want the homage. I don't want to be buried. It's a big question for me how to die. I, I'm not afraid to die, but I'm afraid uh, for the people around me when I shall be dead. I want to be destroyed totally and to put nowhere. Napoleon may have said something totally awful but true. He saw many, many dead persons. And he said, oh, no problem. A night of love in Paris is going to replace everybody with really awful because it's too bad impossible to replace people. But on the other way, it is true that things go on. I mean, I was a teacher all my life, 
and there was always young, new young people, and there's always new lovers in front of the scene in Paris. Things go on, it's never the same. There will be some people after us. You know, in a few years, there will be a filmmaker and an artist who are going to speak in this place. You shall be dead, I shall be dead, but things go on.